Welcome, my lovelies. I'm Lady McCreepster. It's time to check in on our crime scene cleaners and see how they are doing. Heads up, though, this episode will still make your skin crawl. If you're new to this series, a link to all the previous episodes is in the description below. So come now, lean in closer, and we'll begin. By midnight, I still hadn't heard from Kurt, which was surprising. He'd been doing extremely well for a man whose arms looked like fleshy honeycombs, and I expected him to check in periodically, if only to let me know he was still alive. It occurred to me that I was expecting too much. Under the circumstances, it's been easy to forget that I'm his employee, not his friend or anything else. My impatience probably seems ridiculous, but the drive to learn, to know, understand, and seek is all-consuming. The prospect of exploring a new world is overwhelming. I want an adventure so much. It's what I've wanted my entire life. Then there's Kurt. He's a good guy and I care about him probably more than I should. I want to help him, and feelings aside, I have no way to explore this new world if Kurt dies. So, around 11.30 on Tuesday night, I decided to go check on him. I opened my door only to find myself face to face with a stranger. It was a woman copper-eyed and terribly pale, with a choppy, tangled mess of black hair. Chris? she whispered. Yes, I said automatically. Kurt's at the circus, she said. He needs your help. I trusted her for a second before every alarm in my body went off. I tried to slam the door, but she struck forward and wrapped cold fingers around my wrist. The second she touched me, her pallor warmed into a heart-breaking peaches and cream complexion. Dull eyes brightened and dirty hair turned smooth and thick. My own fear and panic evaporated, replaced with a single-minded objective. Help Kurt. I drove to the house with the stranger. The car didn't agree with her. Within moments, she was whimpering and vomiting, but I was so focused on my goal that she barely registered. When we got there, she grabbed my hand and walked me to the second floor. You're the only one allowed inside. Strings of vomit glistened on her chin. She pointed to the vine-choked bedroom. In there. She retreated as I threw open the door. Even in my mesmerized state, the room shocked me. It was nothing but a lush grove of vines, striated leaves and soft, luminescent flowers. I entered. Kurt? Vines crunched under my feet. I winced only slightly as a thorn tore through the sole of my shoe and punched a hole in my heel. Blood gushed, soaking the sock and dripping through the hole. I shook it irritably, vaguely satisfied as drops patted against leaves and petals. Flowers flared brightly where the blood hit. The light swiftly spread from flower to flower, a multicolored chain reaction of bright blossoms. A shadow shifted in the corner. Relief flooded me and I ran over. Kurt, are you okay? The figure reared up. Glowing flowers illuminated an eyeless head that might have been bovine were it not for the teeth. I thought of the coat. That strange fur coat full of dirt and sprouts. Not a coat, a skin. But it had been dead. I'd seen and touched its skull. 
I'd pulled its hide to pieces. How was it alive? The creature lurched forward. Woody vines snapped under massive paws. Long, lupine teeth reflected the eerie light of the flowers. I turned and ran, slamming the door just as the creature pounced. It hit the door with a bone-shaking crack. I darted towards the stairs, stopping when I saw the girl. No longer whole and healthy, not even human. Leathery skin cascaded from her limbs, lumping and folding over itself. Her head was wide and flat, with three enormous eyes and a suppurating snub nose. I spun around and ran to the other bedroom. It was locked. To my shock, voices and music issued from behind it. I pounded on the door, screaming, but no one responded. If anything, the music, soft, playful piping, got louder. The eyeless monster tore a hole in the other door and started to squeeze through. Once again, I lunged for the stairwell, but the girl walked, growing into a multi-limbed monstrosity. I screamed and dashed to the taxidermy room, locking the door behind me. The muffled sounds of music and laughter permeated the room, punctuated by the frantic snarling of the eyeless monster. The taxidermy animals had changed position yet again, flanking the painting like an honor guard. Somehow, the painting's perspective had changed. Instead of that stunning Sylvian landscape of trees and glowing flower vines, it displayed a breathtaking vista of the Labyrinth Valley. The pyramid loomed to the left, cubed steps flashing silver in the moonlight. A warm breeze drifted from the painting, carrying strains of that alien song and the wet, green scent peculiar to lush summers. Summertime. But yesterday, that land had been in the throes of winter. What was going on? The monster crashed into the door, breaking my reverie while sending an explosion of splinters across the room. Without thinking, I ran into the portal. Humid, sweet-smelling air enveloped me. Soft tangles of grass and wildflowers carpeted the ground. Finally, I noticed the pain radiating from my punctured foot. My entire shoe squelched with every step, making my stomach churn. The pyramid towered nearby, ringed on all sides by a maze of massive walls. Awestruck, I started to slow down just as I heard a heavy thudding gallop. I looked over my shoulder and saw the eyeless creature tearing through the grass. It ran low to the ground, long snout stretched outwards. I sprinted through the labyrinth and veered wildly to the right. An unbroken expanse of wall curved as far as I could see. Even through my fear, I marveled at it. The walls were smooth and richly dark. Carvings covered every surface, a mixture of unrecognizable characters and hieroglyphs. Finally, I saw a light ahead, soft and soothing green. It reflected off the walls like a beacon. Grimly ignoring the galloping monstrosity behind me, I put on a final burst of speed and ran to the entrance. The eyeless thing caught me just as I crossed the threshold, batting me down. I squirmed away, heedless of the sharp undergrowth prickling my skin. It caught me easily and swiped. Burning pain subsumed my wrist, followed by a cascade of slick, wet heat. Light erupted all around me, the flowers again blazing to life all around me. I cradled my injured wrist, shivering as blood streamed over my fingers. The monster thrust its snout against my throat. For a terrible instant, its teeth pressed into the soft skin. Then, it pulled back, leaving a cluster of fur and sprouts in the hollow of my throat. 
I crawled to my knees, sobbing, and scuttled away. The pale light illuminated it fully. A broad, bony crest lay atop its long snout, creating a sharp angle that somehow looked inorganic. Thin, brittle skin stretched painfully over its skull, splitting apart in several places to reveal the bone beneath. It didn't have enough flesh to cover its teeth or gums, resulting in a perpetual snarl. Its head was enormous, far too large for its low, muscular body. It tried to raise its head, but couldn't. The snout lifted several inches before plummeting back into the earth. The monstrosity retreated suddenly, disappearing into the tall grass as a shadow swept across me. I turned around, already knowing what I would see. Sleek, long hair shone like glass. Inhumanly sharp planes created an angular, hypnotic face that was equal parts breathtaking and horrifying. He knelt down before me. I kicked away, feet tangling in the long grass, but he grabbed my hands and pulled me close. His skin glimmered strangely. Moon white and iridescent, comprised of a delicate overlapping pattern that reminded me of scales. He inspected my wound, iron grip pressing down to the bone. Then he pressed my wrist to his forehead, smearing my blood all over his face. Somewhere in the labyrinth, a throaty, atonal song began to echo. Finally, he brought the gash to his mouth and sucked. Agony immediately exploded. I thought of poison, of venom, acid eating me down to the bone. This was it. This was fucking it. I was dying outside in an alien pyramid in a shitty painting while a half-starved reptilian dissolved me with his tongue. I whited out. Sometime later, I woke, propped against the labyrinth. I shot up and scanned my surroundings. Nothing. No lights, no monsters, just Bramley flower fields and the endless curve of the wall. I retraced my path and soon found the portal to the taxidermy room. I entered anxiously. Everything was still silent and no music or laughter could be heard. I hurried into the hallway. No eyeless monsters or warped, multi-limbed girls waited on the stairs. I sobbed with relief and ran downstairs but stopped when I saw the front door. The five-eyed taxidermy monstrosity just sat to the side. Glass irises glittered over its unsettling wraparound smile. It looked for all the world like I'd caught it in the act of blocking the door. Those relieved sobs morphed into frightened crying. But what was I supposed to do? Go to the backyard, taking my eyes off this thing in the process? No. Fighting a surge of panic, I tiptoed to the door, staying as far away from the creature as I could. It towered over me, the top of its head grazed the doorframe. Had it been that big before? I couldn't remember. With a choked gasp, I opened the door and ran into the night. I expected it to follow, but I made it to my car safely. I thought immediately of Kurt. The warped girl had used him to lure me away. Maybe this meant he was dead. Maybe it meant something even worse. I had to know either way, so I drove to his house, struggling to suppress visions of limbs so full of holes they split apart. When I pulled up, I saw all his lights were on. I got out of the car, almost laughing with relief. 
the relief soured when Kurt opened the front door. I stopped in my tracks. He looked unwell. His hair lay slicked against his scalp, and his skin glistened under the porch light. My stomach clenched, but I approached anyway. Kurt, sorry for stopping by this late. I... He shushed me and beckoned. His movements were slow, almost clumsy. Where have you been? He whispered. I've been trying to call you all fucking day. My skin prickled. Why? Are you okay? Just come inside, he hissed. Now! An imaginary itch, dirty and pervasive, dreamed its way across my skin, but it wasn't enough to stop me. None of it was. Not the portal or the pyramid. Not the eyeless monster or the long-haired man. Certainly not Kurt or the deep, burrowing holes in his arms. So I went to him. Up close, Kurt's wet skin looked painfully weird. Far too smooth, almost slimy, like he'd coated himself in a thin layer of Vaseline. And his arms, the holes were gone. Whole, unblemished flesh, not only healed, but completely regenerated. I slowed to a halt, unwilling to march up those steps. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Instead of the usual brown, his eyes looked coppery and somehow multifaceted. They weren't Kurt's eyes. With horror, I realized they weren't even human eyes. A hundred tiny shimmering discs composed each iris, the eyes of the parasites that had burrowed into his skin. Parasite Kurt smiled. Are you scared? My knees felt watery and terribly weak. My car was close, but would I be able to outrun him? Would I be able to run at all? Kurt's shoulders heaved and he started to chuckle. Then a voice, his voice, came both from inside the house and from the body in front of me. I'm scared too, but holy shit, come have a look. Kurt, pale, sick, exhausted Kurt, appeared behind his shiny doppelganger. They laughed in tandem, then waved me inside. Shiny Kurt's movements were clumsier and lagged slightly, but there was no doubt about it. They were moving together. I tried to run, but my knees gave out and I fell instead. Shiny Kurt helped me up, in the process leaving a glistening handprint of film on my arm. Come inside, he repeated. One Kurt is scary enough, with two I had no chance of getting away. So I followed his parasite doppelganger into the house. What is this? I asked. Kurt grinned. With a surge of nausea, I noticed that his arms remained pocked with dark, inflamed holes. The sunlight didn't kill them. It made them grow. An unsettling mixture of fear, disbelief and irritation rattled my already shot nerves. Your parasites grew a new you? And you're happy? I can control him, Kurt threw his arms into the air. A fraction of a second later, shiny Kurt followed suit. I can speak through him. I can see through his eyes. He ran his hands through his hair, laughing triumphantly as his doppelganger did the same. He's me. Another part of me. Okay, Kurt, this isn't... What if there are more inside you? There aren't any more. His certainty gave me a chill. For the first time since this started, I wanted no part of it. They're all him now. Somehow, I talked both Kurtz into sleeping. It's been several hours now. 
and worried about Kurt. The holes in his arms look infected. Even worse, I lost a lot of time. I last spoke to Kurt Tuesday afternoon. It's now Thursday evening. An entire day passed while I was in that portal. That doesn't make sense at all. According to the way seasons change in the painting, time passes more quickly there than it does here. As for the injury inflicted by the eyeless thing, it looks all right. The edges are too pale with an iridescent sheen I can't think about for too long. I can't think about Kurt either, really. I've tried to sleep a few times, but whenever I drift off, I hear the faint sound of that piping combined with the atonal singing I heard in the labyrinth. Every time I wake up, I have to fight the urge to return to the house, to that portal. I'm finally afraid. Finally, seeing this entire situation for the horror show it is, rather than the adventure I wanted it to be. I don't know what I'm going to do, though. They know my name and they have my blood. I don't think I have a way out anymore. Which made your skin crawl more? The holes in Kurt's skin or Kurt's doppelganger's eyes? Leave a comment and let me know, along with other things that make your skin crawl. I'll see if I can find a tale that incorporates them. If you're new to this channel, do click on that subscribe button along with that bell icon for updates of new videos. And if you'd like to become a part of my dark family on Patreon, a link is in the description below. That's all I have for you this evening, my dears. Remember, do come back and visit me soon.